Welcome to ProCAD's 3D Smart Supporting Module Tutorials. Watch the entire video or use the on-screen table of contents to skip to a specific topic. The Specifications Manager tutorial covers the following topics. Creating specs, modifying specs, and the import-export options. Let's begin. Double-click the Specification Manager icon to start the application. Our first topic is creating specs. When the manager opens, we see the default ProCAD ANSI Piping 2 library. We open this up. This is the library of all of the components that are available within 3D Smart software. And our specs, if we open those up, are derived from extracting data from our library into specific specs. There are two ways to create a spec. We can create a spec from scratch, or we can copy a spec. To create a new spec from scratch, we can select the Create a New Spec tool. We can give the spec a name. We can select a color for our spec or leave it at the default red. Click Next. We can set the categories and we can show all the categories, all the types, which by default they're toggled on so we can see everything. We can go in and customize and only show selected items or areas. We'll just leave it on all commodities and show all categories and all types. Click Next. It asks for the ANSI rating, so we can then set the rating. This is an A spec, so 150 pound class rating. We can give it a revision number, the date, design pressure. We can fill in that information. I want to work in metric or English units. We can set it to either KPA, kilopascal, or PSI for pounds per square inch. Set our temperature unit to Fahrenheit or Celsius. For English units, we'll set it to Fahrenheit. We can put in a temperature range if we need to, corrosion allowance. We want to use a sixteenth of an inch. We can put in a value. This information can be added. We can then select the type of parameters we would like. So we'll do a raised faced. Bolt type will be stud bolts. Gasket thickness. Let's say it's an eighth of an inch. Small fittings for this spec we'll say are going to be threaded by default. And then we can set our fittings for the small sizes. Let's set it to, say, 2,000 pound class rating. And the valves. Let's pick the 800 pound class rating for this particular spec. Click Finish, and our new spec is now created. We can then add groups and types to our spec, and we can say Select for Add, or All from the Library, or All from a particular spec. So we'll just select for Add, and it will give us a listing of all the possible components within our library. We'll keep this one simple for this tutorial. We'll just do Pipe, so we'll add in the pipe. We'll add in some flanges, we'll do the gaskets, the bolts, and let's say elbows. Click Apply, and the components are now added in. We say OK. We now have a spec that's created that only contains pipe, valves, gaskets, flanges, elbows, and bolts. To further add more information to our bolts, or say for our flanges or pipe, we can then add more types. Select for Add, again from the library, or all from the library, or from a particular spec. We'll just select for Add, and we see the types of subcomponents that we can add to our pipe. So we'll just do Pipe for now. Say OK. And now all we have is Pipe. Under the Pipe, we can then add more types. So what type of pipe? We can now have different types of pipe. We have Double Submerged Arc Welding, or DSAW, Electric Resistance Weld, ERW, or Seamless. Let's use Seamless for our sample. We now have Seamless Pipe added to our spec, add the group. And what type of schedules would we like to see? And for this one, we'll just pick Schedule 80 and say OK. So now all we have is Schedule 80 Seamless Pipe available within our spec. Double click the Schedule 80, shows us all the different sizes that are available within the Schedule 80 seamless pipe. We can click to add the sizes, so we'll go from 2 inch and bigger, 2 inch, 3 inch, 4 inch, 6 inch, 8 inch, say 10 inch. So now we have added the following pipe sizes, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, and 10 inch. These would be now accessible within the 3D modeler. This would be done for all the components that you want added into the spec same sequence. An easier way to create, or the second way to create a spec, would be to create a spec or a copy of an existing spec. So let's take a look at the second way of creating a spec. 
select create news pack. We'll give it our news pack name. And we'll just go A2. This time, though, we're going to create it like a spec that's already existing. And this time, I'll pick my A spec, which is the default spec that comes with the software, and then click Next. Click Next. Revision number, the date, PSI, Fahrenheit. Click Next. Click Finish. Because it's a warning, just click OK. And it tells us it's going to copy 1,400 specs from our spec A into our spec TLP-A2. And we just say OK. And now if we open up our spec, you'll see that we have all of the components similar to the A spec have already been copied over into our spec. We can see that we have pipe, seamless, and we have schedule 40, 80, and standard weight pre-selected and preset. When we click on the standard weight, we will see we have the 12 inch available under the schedule 80. We'll have half inch up to two inch. Schedule 40, we have from two and a half inch up to 10 inch, all copied from an existing spec. Our next topic is modifying specs. So once we have created our specs, we created the TLPA1 that was just from scratch, and then we created spec TLP-A2 as a copy of our A spec. At any time, we can go in and modify our specs simply by opening up the spec, selecting the components, and then adding or modifying the components. If nothing exists under the bolt, I can go in and add information to the bolt. It shows from our library what is available. So I can pick up my raised faced bolts, and now they're added to my spec. Underneath the raised faced, I can then add more components as far as what type. Do I want machine bolts or stud bolts? So if I want both, click on both, click apply, and now we have our machine bolts and stud bolts. We can then add the groups. What type of bolts do we want? What rating do we want these bolts? So I can click my 150 pound rating. And then if I double click it, when we see the red cube, that tells us we're at the bottom level. So now we can add the sizes that we like to show. So maybe we want from two inch. We don't want the five inch. We can remove it. So just by clicking on blue icons, so we have from two inch to 12 inch in the 150 pound class rating to match our spec. We can do this for each of our component types within our spec. So modifying it is quite easy. Modify an existing spec or the copy of this of the spec, and let's go to the elbows, 90 degree butt weld, long radius, regular, and let's look into the schedule 40. And maybe in schedule 40, I do not want the two and a half inch, so I can just remove that two and a half inch. So let's say I want the two inch added. So now we have two inch up to 10 inch. We've made some changes. We've modified our spec. We can then go back out, change or modify any of other components. Finished, we can click Save. And this saves this information. And then when we're finished, simply exit the spec. Our last topic in the tutorial is the import export options. Once we have created our specs, and we'd like to create a backup copy of our specs, or if we need to copy our specs and give to a client or other users, we can create an export of the specs. So under the tools pull down, we have import and export specs. Select the export spec. We see our dialog box for the export utility. Select the library, select the spec to export, and let's export our TLPA2. Gives us our spec, allows us to change the file location. We'll just take the default location, click export, and it extracts all the information from our spec and gives us a dialog saying it has been successfully completed. Let's take a look at where that file would be. Puts it in a folder called spec output, and there we see our, a folder with our name TLP-A2. We open that folder, it has all the data and information regarding our spec. Easy to do. This folder can be backed up, copied, and sent to other clients or put on other machines. To import a spec would just be the opposite. We'll import a spec, open the utility, it will search that output file, it finds our spec. We can then open it. it says a unique name is required, so I already have an existing A2, so I'll just put in a dash new and say import. And now it uploads the spec. It says it was successfully imported. Click OK, 
And now when I open up my specs folder, we now see we have the new spec, which I can then go in and rename to match an existing spec or a client's specification. This concludes the topics covered in the Specification Manager tutorial. Please review the tutorial or select the next tutorial.